think this will be good. I'm going to play with the camera a little bit. i got to push this back a little bit. All right, so we're doing a little deadlift party. Thank you guys for coming. We're going to start our warm-ups now. I think you'll have to take my word for it. There will be 3.30 on there, but uh, I don't think you'll be able to see the, the weights, but I think that's probably good enough for try that for the time being. Oh, technology. Okay. All right, so we're going to do a little warm-up to kind of get started. That looks pretty good. I'll take it. All right, we're going to go live on the gram. All right, so we're going to warm up our hips, our upper back, our hamstrings for today. So if you guys get any like kind of warm-up devices that you'd like. All right, so. And then we'll put this guy over here. All right, so. First thing we're going to do is just kind of practice the pattern a little bit. So you guys can just scare a broomstick or whatever you have. Just do some hip hinges, some Romanian deadlifts, whatever you want to call it. And now we're going to work on engaging our lats a little bit. So I'm going to attach a band. If you don't have a pole, you can just use the band itself. We're going to do some shoulder extensions. And then after I do a couple there, I'm going to do some Romanian deadlifts. So we call this a deadlift with RNT. Trying to pull my lats out of position. So I'm just kind of grooving the pattern right now. And again, if I don't have a dowel rod, I can just do this with the bands. And just come here and I'll just keep my thumbs in contact with my body. And that allows me to make sure my lats are engaged the whole time. I can make this more dynamic and do a shoulder extension into the hip extension. And that's a great way to warm up your upper back and lats before you deadlift. I'm going to grab a colorful hip circle for today. I'm going to do some more hip hinges with this and then some squats. You can do some glued bridges with the hip circle as well. You can do some wide stance hinges to work on my sumo position. Now I'm going to combine both. And do some RT work with that wide position. So I'm working on getting tension in my hips and in my lats which is very, very important, especially if you're a sumo deadlifter, rooting your feet, bracing the upper body through that lat engagement. I'm just going to do some just general upper back work now and do a couple of squats. Just getting nice and warm. couple of pull-aparts with the band. Just opening up the chest a little bit. Get my upper back nice and warm. Now I'm going to do some uh, specific warm-ups with the bar. And keep the hip circle on for a little bit. So I'm going to do some warm-ups with 135 and 225. And right now, I'm not, um, I'm not uh, training for powerlifting, so I will use straps for some of my workout. I'm not worried about that, since I'm not training for a specific powerlifting meet right now. I'm going to pull the slack out, try and keep the barbell over my midfoot, scapula in line with the bar, drive with my hips. 
Throw the hips forward. So I'm going to warm up with both stances, which is a good strategy, especially if you're new to a certain stance or you're working on transitioning. So I'm just going to do a couple of reps here. And then we're going to add some weight. I'm going to take that hip circle off. This is a good product. If you guys don't have a deadlift jack, it's called a deadlift wedge. Um, it's by liftunlimited.net. So this is a really good alternative here. All right. And uh, Mel's going to kind of moderate the chat box. And if you guys have any questions, uh, you guys can also unmute yourselves as well. So this is a deadlift wedge. If you uh, don't have a jack at home, a really cheap alternative. So if you're doing something like today, 60% or so, uh, you don't need to take a ton of warm-ups. Uh, if you're doing a little bit more heavy weight, Somewhere from like four or five, six warm ups is probably good. You're going really heavy. I'm only going to take a couple of warm ups. And then we're going to get right into the workout. I'm going to stay beltless for now and then we'll add a belt later. Even with my warm ups and being, being mindful to my setup. So I'm going to do one more set each and I'm going to load 330 on the bar. Whew. Uh, if you guys have any questions or any, any jokes or anything to add, again, you feel free. This is just a fun day. So feel free to uh, add in any commentary if you guys want to unmute yourselves. And uh, chat uh, in between sets, totally cool. And Mel will help uh, moderate if, as I'm lifting. So I'm going to do one more single each stance, and then we're going to put the weight of the day on the bar. So the goal of today is form. And force production. We're going to do 33 singles. All right, so now we're going to use a deadlift wedge once again. So just, just so you know, I'm not cheating here. I got my two and a halves <laughs> to make it 330. And we got 10 pound collars. I can only see four people. Does everybody see everybody else? Uh, just depending on what view you're on, there's uh, different options to view. So Mel can kind of help you with that. If you have any questions as far as using the Zoom, and I also think it depends on if you're using a, a phone or a laptop. I think if you're using a phone, you might not be able Plus, to see. Plus, only it. about four people have their cameras on. The yeah. rest of the people have their cameras. Uh, the cameras. So on. you have four people that are uh, visible, and then you got the rest are just are just creeping and and uh, supporting. So 
That's all good. Okay, so we're gonna I'm gonna throw my belt on. So what we're gonna do is uh, Mel. Anyone who wants to play the game. Uh, so Mel, you can kind of just keep an eye on the clock uh, after I do the first uh, rep. So I'm going to give you guys a couple of hints before we start. So um, if someone could uh, message Brad also, Brad, uh, it's Brad and Tabitha Short on Facebook and send him the link because I'm not going to be able to do that. He's uh, trying to get on, having trouble. So that would be great. You guys can shoot him a message. He's in our Facebook group. All right, so there's going to be uh, a couple of different categories. So first we're going to go over grip, grip types. Then we're going to go over stance, grip width, and range of motion variations. Then just general variations of the exercise. And then tempo variations of the exercise. And then we'll finish off with some other things. So uh, if you guys want to play the game, uh, just let Mel know now. And she'll keep track of uh, how many variations you get correct. So we're going to do 33 variations of the deadlift. If you're just following along with the workout, I recommend just doing your competition stance. If you like to go back between sumo and conventional, that's cool too. Uh, if you want to use chalk, if you want to use straps, whatever you like, uh, just be smart. Uh, work on your technique. Don't go too heavy. Use about 60%. And then we're going to rock and roll. So I'm going to throw the belt on. And then I'm going to start the workout. So after my first rep, uh, Mel's going to keep track of, I'm going to try to do every minute on the minutes, the goal for today. And uh, you guys can, uh, if you guys have any knock knock jokes or you have any commentary, uh, you can type your answer in the chat box. Keep me uh, enter entertained during this time. So the first category is going to be grip, grip types. So I'm going to show you what I'm doing now. Okay, and then you're going to call out what type of deadlift this is. So again, I'm doing this with my hands. All right, now I'm going to go every minute on the minute. So let's see what you guys think that was. So we're doing a grip. I did this with my fingers. Uh, I'm using about 330, but yeah, just something around 60% is good, Nick. I'm at 300. is fine. Uh, you, uh, who wants the steak? You, someone wants a virtual steak. <laughs> All right, so Mel, you could tell me when the minute is up. You've got 25 seconds. Nice. I'm taking my time here. <laughs> Who's playing the game? What did I do? I couldn't see. I, you're only this big. <laughs> okay, well, I'm just, I overlapped my fingers like this. So what's that called? Weightlifters use that grip. Overhead grip. Okay, so that's coming up next, but I did something different first. So I'm I'm, t I'm going over my thumb. Oh, the open grip. So Lisa's got it. Yeah, there's, how do you a type? there's a chat box also. Mel, how do you type? <laughs> uh, go down to the bottom where it says yeah. more. There's three dots. Yeah. And then the menu is going to come up at the very top. It says chat. Oh, okay. All right, Thank so I'm, you. I'm doing that same, yep. same grip, but now it's a different stance this time. Now for the next two, I'm not going to overlap my thumb. I'm just going to grip it like this. So it looks like Lisa's in the lead. She's got one green check mark. Carrie, what kind of cereal you got? You got anything good? You got anything to uh, to keep me going? Anything to motivate me? <laughs> 
She's probably just sitting there, like, staring at her cereal, crying. Oh, boy. Sad. Mm. It's really sad. Really sad. I was really excited. I got to eat sweet potatoes yesterday. It was delicious. I got some sweet potatoes. That's sad. <laughs> I got depressing. excited over my sweet potatoes. And then, uh, yeah, can I see those? So this was on the menu today. We got three beautiful center cut ribeyes from Pe Piedmontese, or otherwise known as Piedmontese beef. The muscle-bellied Belgian blue cows with the Italian heritage from Nebraska. These are amazing. So this is going to help fuel me for later. Oh. All right. All right. Am I, is that minute up yet? Or what, what yep. we? Yeah. All right. So now I'm not, I'm not overlapping my thumb. I'm just going, gripping it like this. Oh, my stubby Italian fingers are working hard. I'm um, doing 33 singles. 33 singles, Nicholas. <sighs> Looks like Jose's benching hard over there. He's working on his pectorals, and I like it. You guys have any uh, after party ideas uh, for like something you want a game you want to play or anything like that? Let me know. All right, so we got one more like this, different stance this time. We're gonna do one more. Okay. So, done with this grip, and now we're going to switch it to this guy. Whatever you prefer. Also, not having chalk sucks, too. Just as a general side note. Nice hat, Carrie. I like it. Very nice. Very festive for the occasion. So I think we are uh, we're four reps down. Got about twenty nine reps to go. You got about forty seconds. Who? You ever do squats on the minute? That's the worst. All right. So now we're gonna go with that grip. This is a good way to kind of get like a lot of work in in a specific time, especially if you're training alone. And some of us tend to uh, rush or, or rest. So even a minute, if you're doing like lower uh, lower volume, uh, lower reps can be a good amount of rest if you're doing like speed work and things like that. Also been doing a lot of beltless training, which has uh, felt been really beneficial for me to kind of limit the amount of weight I'm doing. Um, so that's been helpful. Just trips me up with Gina. If you guys have any uh, knock knock jokes or anything, any commentary you'd like to add, 
you guys can also just let me know in the chat box how you guys are doing. How how is your week? How's work been? How's your eating been? Do you have any funny any funny uh, social distancing stories for me? Any sad social distancing stories for me? Whatever whatever you want to share. So we're gonna do one more uh, with the with this grip. John, this one's for you. Oh, what do you got? Is your camera on? It is. Cool. I just gotta scroll through everybody. Let's see what it we got. It does. Great. <laughs> oh, I mi I missed it. What happened? Oh, nice. Very good. I have it up. Nice. Let's. Uh, <laughs> nice. Very, fair, nice. Though, I was like that well before. I can't even nice. Oh, uh, Lisa, Lisa's got her body armor on. That's nice. I've done Murph with this bridge like six times. All right, let me change uh, gallery view. All right, we're gonna do whatever you're ready, John. All right, so now we got the other stamps with that grip. guys because I'm a baby I gotta protect my, I gotta pr protect my precious hands Whew. all right let's see what we got here and uh, I wish there was a way that we could just kind of rotate through you guys let's see gallery view speaker view Got the body armor ready. Brian's working hard over there. Cleo what? wants to know when she's getting steak. Oh, <laughs> steak is coming. Brad's Brad's doing some curls for the girls. I like it. Very good. All right. So for those that have trouble doing straps, uh, oh, and Liz is joining us. She's joining the party. I wonder Hi, Liz. I wonder if she's going to make a nice knitting uh, design for today. All right. So now we're going to go through with these guys. A little grip aid. I like to wrap the straps around twice, and then I like to crank, crank, until it's tight on my wrist and then I'll still set up the same way once my feet are planted a lot of people tend to change their technique with straps and try to keep it the same as much as possible Whew. so we're going to do one more with the strap and then we're going to move on to stance and grip with and range of motion modifications. That'll be fun. What's up, Liz? Uh, I, we were having a good discussion as well in the VIP group. Uh, if you guys, maybe Melon, if you can uh, take uh, some inventory of this. If you guys have really good meal uh, or food delivery services, if you guys could send those over to Melon. And we'll uh, make a document for you guys of where you guys are getting your meat, where you guys are getting, um, where you guys are getting your produce from, your food. Um, it's because that's always I think that'd be a great uh, guide for you guys during this time, the next couple of weeks. Um, so we have yeah, about ten seconds. Okay, I gotta get going. So Kyle, hold that thought. We got some questions on the gram. All right, so we're gonna go through the other stamps. Another common mistake I see is sometimes people will go too narrow with their grip on sumo, and that kind of uh, makes it hard to engage the lat. So make sure your arms are straight up and down. So we got a question on the gram from Kyle, and I think Garrison's trying to join, so maybe if someone could send him the... The Zoom link on Facebook, that'd be great. Uh, and then lower back hurts from deadlifts. 
Uh, don't use a lifting belt, but I do feel by back is solid. Do you think it's a problem? So uh, um, um, if you're wearing a belt for deadlifts, it should not be used as a crutch. It should be used to enhance your brace, Kyle. So uh, you want to be able to learn to brace and, uh, and kind of use that lower, uh, lower back as a stabilizer, not as a, as a prime mover. So work on your breathing and bracing technique. Add the belt as needed, but don't use it as a crutch. So that's your advice there. So now we are done with strap variations. Oh, this is going to be fun. Have you ever tried the, uh, the wow straps? No, I'm just a creature of habit. I know a lot of people like them, but... So now we're going to go with a wider grip. So there's a specific name for this. It's uh, utilized by like a lot of weightlifters and crossfitians. This is not going to be fun. <laughs> Definitely straps are advised for this variation of the lift. As you can see, by going wider, it extends the range of motion and increases the demand for the upper back. Lisa is getting all the green checks. Thank you, G Money. This is an educational birthday party. Who would have thought? All right, next up, we're going to do a more, this is an untraditional version, but I have seen a man, uh, you might be familiar, this is a favorite of uh, Johnny Candido. It's going to work your hips and your lats. I don't really like this one, but I had to pick 33 variations, so here we go. Oh, let's see what we got here. Anyone who's lifting, uh, let me know how you're doing, how you're feeling. to go. 20 sangles. Uh, for everyone that's, anyone that's training, uh, let's just check in. Let me know how you're doing. We're about a third of the way done or so. So far, I'm feeling good. It's uh, I, I'm actually in decent aerobic shape right now, so that's helping with the recovery. So now I'm going to do my best Brian Shaw impersonation. See how that goes. So if you're a bigger guy, you may want to do your conventional like this. So bigger guys might like that style. No excuses. Get it done. Next one's going to be a little bit of a tweener stance. So you guys can check that one out. We call this a combo.
So the combo stance is when your hands start inside and then they end up outside your legs. That's kind of, Jose has a, something kind of like that. It's not a super wide sumo, so that's a consideration. If going too wide hurts your hips. You don't have to use the same stance width as everybody. So this is a cool product I want to share with you. This is from uh, BC Strength. Um, I'm going to get these for our gym, uh, but these are a really cheap squat wedge. So this could be utilized for deficit deadlifts. This can be utilized for high bar healed squats. This is like 30 bucks. So for a home gym, this is a great option if you want to make your uh, exercises, if you want to add range of motion to the deadlift, or if you want to uh, make your exercises more quad dominant. So this is a great idea. This is a great thing that you could utilize uh, for front squats, high bar squats. Uh, if you want to make your Bulgarian split squats more quad dominant, great great option. Because most of the wedges on the market are that are not like really crappy or really expensive. So this is a good option, and uh, they're in stock right now. So that's that's another good thing. So I'm using this as a, a way to increase my range of motion. It's a little bit more comfortable than just using a plate. So it's gonna force me to lift the bar a little longer. And if I was able to, I don't really like a deficit sumo, but we'll show it. If I was to stack two of these side by side, uh, that would also be a way to do a deficit sumo for those that have really good mobility. We don't really do it a ton, but it is an option. So if you don't have a wedge, Obviously, another option is just standing on plates. Just got to make sure, you know, bumper plates usually work well, well for, for this. But that's another way to extend your range of motion. You want to make sure the plates are heavy enough that they're not sliding on you, obviously, especially if you're doing a sumo, there's definitely a risk in that. But you don't really program the deficit of sumo too much, if at all, so it's just a uh, consideration. If we are able to put some weight, weights under here, uh, we can also do a block for less, less range of motion. So by adding something underneath, that will shorten the stroke. So if I pretend if I had blocks underneath, it would stop about at that height. Working more in the lockout position. And I could do the same thing in the other stance. Again, so if I had the blocks here, it would stop me about there. Now we're going to get into some different variations of the deadlift. Exciting stuff. Oh, I could smell those steaks. They're starting to cook. That's my motivation right now. Some nice red meat. Going to make those muscles nice and strong. 
Lisa is in the lead right now. I think she's the only one playing, but <laughs> got to be in it to win it. That's the moral of the story. Brian, how are you doing over there? Good. Good, good. Nice, man. Getting a sweat going now. I know. I've got, I'm starting to, uh, <laughs> starting to break a sweat myself. We are, so I am 17 in. Yep. Yep. All right, so now we're going to adjust the variation. So, Gray, stop bullshitting, lift some weights. What's going on? <laughs> uh, oh, Simon's answered. Oh, Simon's in the lead. Okay. <laughs> Simon's uh, the dark horse. All right, so now we're going to go over a different variation. So now I'm going to adjust my back angle. So instead of pulling from here, I'm going to pull from here. And we're going to do that with both stances. This allows us to overload the glutes, the hamstrings, and the lower back a little bit more. And typically, we do this with lighter weights. So we're going to, instead of starting with the hips here, we're going to start with the hips high. Pull through. Trying to keep the back flat. Looks like Jose is getting a good pump on, so he's good. Good Saturday pump. So we could obviously do the same thing from a wider stance. And the benefit of this is it's not going to be as much range of motion. So if you have trouble maintaining your back angle without bending your knees, uh, this could be a good variation for you regardless of your stronger stance. If you're stronger sumo or conventional, by adjusting your feet, well change the, the range of motion and potentially allow you to do the exercise with better form if the goal is to overload the hamstrings and low back and kind of take the quads out of the equation. So now we're going to go, I like the only difference is I like to point my toes straight ahead. That way I don't confuse this variation, this stiff leg variation with my competition stance. Folks, what you got there, folks? Folks, what's your deadlift? What you pulling? Now this is going to be a partial range deadlift. So if you don't have access to blocks or a rack, this is a good substitute. Uh, typically you're going to do this movement for higher reps. It's named after uh, one of the countries on the other side of the world, utilizing weightlifting a lot. So we're going to do that in both stances. I typically like to do this one conventional, personally. But I have seen some lifters advocate this in both stances. I like to add, uh, use this one conventional. Just to, because due to the, the mechanics of the lift to overload uh, the hamstrings. So if you can't do a full range hinge all the way to the floor, uh, that is a good variation. So almost uh, two thirds of the way in, almost. Another 
So the next two is going to be inspired by Eddie Cohen. Uh, he used to do these uh, for repetition work with lighter weights. It's going to be a little bit between a regular deadlift and a Romanian deadlift. It's going to be a little bit of a combination. And we're not going to actually touch the weights to the floor. This is also really great for uh, learning to control the eccentric and build up some muscle. If you don't have a lot of weight in your garage and you want to deadlift, uh, this is a great variation. I do recommend using this the next two with straps. So that variation, the weights never actually touch the ground. Carrie, we'll talk soon. Keep up the good work. Tell uh, someone, tell Carrie she's got to uh, jump on Jeopardy next time. So the next uh, variations will be with accommodating resistance. If you have access to any of these, any type of band, you can stand on the band. And that will make it heavier at the top, lighter at the bottom. So again, if you're limited with the amount of weights you have, it's definitely a good option. If you are doing these sumo with standing on the band, just realize that it's going to stretch more, which is going to make it harder. I like to put the bands close together. I smell the steaks juice is flowing. If you're using straps with bands for whatever reason, sometimes you need to set up the strap a little bit further away and then work your hands in so that way you don't knock the band out of place. So that's something to consider. Heavier at the top. Lighter at the bottom. If you're going sumo, consider using a lighter band tension since your stance is going to end up being wider. It's going to stretch the band more. So that's something you need to take into consideration. So doing uh, like a workout like today, uh, it's a really good way to get a lot of good quality volume in, uh, especially if you don't have a spotter, especially if you are limited on equipment. Uh, doing more sets and less reps is just a good strategy just to really work your technique and uh, just get some quality work in. So now we're going to try the same version with the other stance. 
pushing the big toe into the ground, lifting the chest up. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Uh oh, casualty. <laughs> Didn't bust the band, but I did bust my hat. It's a sad day. But luckily, got a backup. Awesome job, Lisa. I'm excited to get my body armor in. Whew. Looks like Jose is working hard over there. Yeah, the hat just uh, the hat uh, couldn't take the pressure. All right, so I'm actually gonna take the hat off for this one just for safety. Uh, don't try this at home, this is just uh, an experiment. We're gonna give this a go. So I've been kind of experimenting with a way that you could do some overload work uh, at home if you don't have a rack. See how this goes. Oh my God. Don't try this at home. I saw the two and I was like, no, he's not going to do that. And then you proceeded to do it. <laughs> Don't try this at home. All right, let's see how this works. If you're a little cla claustrophobic, then I don't recommend this one. Not too bad. So it's a little reverse. Do you feel reversed. like that actually took some weight off at the bottom? You know, it does. It's just really uncomfortable on your neck. So that's the way you can overload, but I don't recommend it. <laughs> <laughs> but in a pinch, if you like had to. Um, yeah, even I'd probably use mini band, so number one, it doesn't cut off your circulation to your neck, and I'd probably only do a single rep, but it actually worked pretty good. It was considerably easier. Uh, I don't think you're getting a full full uh, weight at the top, so you could probably, it's uh, not exact, but it's an option. If you ever have to, uh, <laughs> if you ever had to do a, a reverse band set at home, it is an option, but I'd probably use that very, very sparingly, but... Lisa has, uh, let's see, oh, Gina. <laughs> All right. No, no poverty bench. It looks like Brad's doing some work. I'd like to see that. It's a picture. It looks like a husband's laughing at me. <laughs> That's funny. Brad's doing some good work over there. Nick's doing some good work. Awesome. All right, looks like Nick's got three wheels on there. He's playing with the big boys now. Nice. Looking good. All right, only got a couple more to go. All right, so. Uh, now we're going to um, adjust the tempo, which is a great way to train your technique and uh, make things a little bit harder. And then, uh, we, then the last three will just be some more variations just for the sake of uh, the order. I just switched up the order a little bit. We've got a couple of uh, two variations for tempo. You can add pauses or do a slow eccentric. So we're going to do the pauses first. Uh, really important, when anytime you do a pause variation, uh, deadlift or not, you don't want to double bounce the pause. You want to dead stop the pause and then come straight up. Uh, that's for technical purposes, but also to really make sure that you're creating so much muscle tension that you're really learning to hold that position 
even when the weight is, is challenging or even if you kind of get stuck. So again, when you're pausing, you can pause at various points. I like to pause at the transition for most people because that's usually where people kind of mess up is either just below the knee or um, right at the knees. So you can kind of play with that. If you're weaker off the floor, uh, pause uh, lower to the ground. If you're weaker at the lockout, pause just below the knees. And you want to come straight up. After the pause, you don't want to bounce it. And you can do that with either stance. Especially with the sumo stance, a lot of people will lose their position right off the floor. So if you can learn to just hold that position and create so much tension in your upper back and tension in your legs. A lot of people do not. They have a hard time creating tension in their legs to initiate the pull off the floor and they tend to tip forward. So these pause pulls are a great way to feel your position. Uh, you'll feel it right away if you're tipping, if you're pausing right off the ground. So really, really engage that back. And then come straight up. Great way to train your technique. So we got two more tempo variations. And then we got three additional miscellaneous variations. Looks like Brian's working hard. Gina and Jose doing a good job. Nice. Nick's getting his work in. Mom and Dad are on the horn, which is great. Let's see uh, Brian's form here. Good. Doing a better job. Yeah, Brian, you could uh, play with, uh, bring your stance in a little bit, see how that feels. But I like you're pulling the slack out of the bar, keeping the arms longer, a lot better. Excellent job. So now we're going to do a slow lowering phase, which is great for uh, if you don't have a lot of weight or if you want to build some muscle with the deadlift. Typically in the deadlift, people drop really quickly. But if you want to get a little bit more muscle activation during hypertrophy phase or right time, like right now, uh, if you don't have a meet coming up, that slow eccentric, great way to train the pattern. And also get more time under tension with the muscle. Really feel your positions on the way down. Considerably more challenging to really control that eccentric, especially if you have trouble holding your back angle. That slow eccentric is a great way to feel your position and learn what a neutral back feels like. This is especially true for beginners, especially true for uh, if you're trying to change stances, uh, adding this in as a secondary exercise for a little higher reps with lower weight, a uh, great way to feel your positions and get that muscle activation in, in your upper back, your glutes, your hamstrings, all the muscles that control your posture and your spine position. If you tend to bang your knees on the way down by slowing that that lowering phase, it helps teach you when to bend at the hip and when you need to bend to your knees later. So if you tend to bang your knees on the way down to the deadlift, uh, doing a slow eccentric exercise, it's a great, great variation for you. Now we're gonna do one of our favorites. We're gonna save one of the best for last and then we'll do two easier ones. Oh, the old Louis Simmons. Oh boy, this is a tough one. This is a great exercise to train your sumo. We're going to do a back extension. If you're also trying to build some mobility, uh, it could be a good way to also just learn the technique. I don't really like this conventional. Uh, it doesn't to me. It doesn't really make sense, but I've seen people do it. But I really like this for someone who's learning sumo. We want to try to do a back extension first. 
hold the position, and then drive straight up without tipping forward. And that's pretty challenging for me. Whew. That's a chair deadlift. AKA box deadlift. So we got two more to go. Then it's almost steak time. I'm so excited to get my Piedmontes beef. So we have two more to go. Liz, you're my hero. It's awesome. I agree. All right, so next two. do out of a rack, rack pull. Uh, you can also do heavy holds here if the rack's really high or heavy holds just for your grip. If you want to train uh, your grip, doing a very, very high rack hold is a great way to train your grip. You could do this double overhand. You can do this with a hook. You can do this with a mixed grip. We like to do anywhere from three to six sets of anywhere from five to 10 seconds. Uh, that's a really great way to train your grip. Uh, we usually use a smooth bar or a stiff bar for this exercise. Okay, you can do this both sumo and conventional. Typically we do these conventional. But just doing these high rock pull holds. One, two, three, four, five. Great way to train your grip. Again, we're working to hold for time. So if you're someone that tends to drop your deadlifts, this is a great variation that you could do on your squat day. Just three to six sets, five to ten seconds, pretty heavy weight. And you, I would typically do these above the knees because it's not about the pull. It's about working the grip strength. So I'm not using straps for this anymore. So I did the first one double overhand. And then as you get heavier in weight, uh, you can also do these with a mixed grip. So for this one, we'll hold for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. All right. Now we're going to trip the weights down. You guys are going to finish the workout. And then we're going to have some steak. I'm really excited. So... Let me know if you guys have any questions or if you guys have ideas for the after party, which we could do later tonight, or we could do some fun stuff now if you guys have some time. We could switch over to house party. We could do some other things. That's 33 exercises for the deadlift. So there's a lot you could do with just the barbell. All right, so we're going to move locations now. Thank you guys for watching. Have a great day. All right. Whew. Uh, I'm not sure what Liz is, who is, maybe Liz had a question for somebody. All right. Well, that was fun. I might have went a little bit quick on some things. All right, so. We're going to plug in here. Oh, I still got my belt on. Excuse me. 
I'm going to do beltless uh, eating steak now. Uh, water. All right, so participants, thank you guys for coming on. Let's see what we got here. Appreciate you guys coming on today. Hope you guys learned something and enjoyed. And we're going to have our steak in a few minutes.